muted. I, I didn't do it. It did it. It's supposed to unmute me. All right. Here's the trick. If it you mute it before we go in, then mm -hmm. it stays muted. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not gonna admit that I did that. Um, <laughs> so, hey everybody, we have a we have a, a pretty big crew on the couch today. I know we had to like send out for a sectional. Yeah, so. this is, <laughs> and believe me, finding a, a a sectional in orange is not easy. No, <laughs> so, it's not. Um, but yeah, so so first of all, you know we're a little late. There's just been a lot going on, a lot being announced uh, today. You may have seen the machine learning keynote. A lot of really good stuff there. Man. Um, but so much stuff. It's hard to keep it, up with. I I just I can't. So you know. It's hard enough to keep up with the container announcements and everything we do in our containers org. I just can't imagine having to know everything we do in AWS. It's crazy. Yeah, it totally is. And, you know, as back when, I mean, think about it, Adam, back when we were like, you know, building a SaaS, you know, we would have to keep up with all this stuff because every time there was an announcement, it would typically mean that we could go and delete, you know, uh, more code. So um, yes. it, it's which is such a great feeling. You're absolutely yes. right. But uh, yeah, I mean, keeping up with all of that, I mean, it's 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 like reInvent is Christmas for us. You know, <laughs> there's just so much coming and so much that, that we get to start using and take advantage of. So you're right. I mean, the containers organization shipping a ton of stuff, but just all of AWS shipping just so much. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's fun. So, okay. Let's let's dive in because you know we are limited time wise just with everything going on. But um, so I'm gonna actually pass it off to Michael. Michael, you can introduce everyone. You know we're gonna talk about um, AWS Distro for Open Telemetry today. Why don't you kind of kick us off and, and make some introductions? Yeah, thanks a lot. So um, today we have a super exciting topic, and that is um, Open Telemetry, our distro, and we're gonna do some hands-on around uh, Prometheus metrics. Um, and yeah, with me we have uh, Alolita here and and Amon from the AWS Observability team, and uh, we're doing all together a lot of open source. Um, yeah, and with that, heading over to Alolita. All right. Um, again, hi, everyone. Very happy to be on uh, the uh, Containers uh, from the Couch show. Uh, thanks, Brett and uh, Adam, for having us here. Uh, excited to be talking about Open Telemetry and AWS Distro for Open Telemetry and all, and, and having a really cool demo. Uh, I'm Alolita Sharma. I'm a principal technologist uh, on the AWS observability team and uh, super involved in the open telemetry project. I serve on the governance committee of the project itself and I've been working in open source for a long time. So very thrilled to be actually discussing observability uh, solutions and what we are doing with open source observability today. Uh, so with that, uh, I wanted to get started about, um, you know, uh, key aspects of observability, but um, I'll also let Aman uh, introduce himself and then maybe we can get uh, started from there. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Aman. I'm, I'm an intern on at AWS working with Alita and AWS Observability's open source team, uh, and I'm very happy to be here. Nice. Welcome. So what is what is obser observability and what is the observability project or it, distro? It helps you to, to figure out what code you can throw away. That's what it is. <laughs> then, then I'm all about it, yes. <laughs> um, Seriously, though, it, it has to do with with insights, right? Like if you if you think about you have all these containerized microservices or even functions or whatever, you have like lots of moving parts, right? And if you're flying blind there, like if you don't know what's going on, um, be it logs or metrics or, or traces, then you know you don't really know what you should be doing, right? And and what Alalila and, and her team are working on is giving us all these tools, right? All everything that allows us to instrument and send these signals and and interpret them and so on, right? And that's that's super exciting. Right? So when I think really? back to um, a monolith that uh, that I used to have to manage. Um, you know, that, that monolith was, it, it, it was a giant 
a you know piece of code, it would have to reach out and talk to a database. It would get back a response, and then it would serve back you know to whoever made the request. It would serve back the response. Um, today, you know, we don't really do things that way anymore. We like to break things apart into microservices. Um, so that distribute that distributed. Uh, nature having you know a transaction talk to many different services that each might talk to many different databases or flow through many different you know maybe it's a queue or maybe it's a uh, I don't know what else uh, I mean it, it's so what you're saying is now there's there's a distro that can help us identify you know the the whole flow and watch that whole flow is that is that what this is really all about and and what it's meant to do yeah uh, and and i think uh, even more i mean as uh, traditionally as you know uh, monitoring has been done for as long as uh, we've had uh, computing stacks and really to understand the health of systems, to understand performance metrics, to understand you know different types of data about the how the uh, you know and, and observing the system. Now fast for fast forward to what is being done today. Um, as we work on compute stacks uh, in the cloud, we actually are looking at not only container metrics, uh, container insights but also looking at application level and infrastructure um, data, right? In terms of looking at what is the health of each of these components at any given point in time. And, and while we gather and monitor uh, that data coming in, in the form of logs, um, metrics, or traces, uh, we also are observing them, analyzing them to see uh, what is, not working and why it is not working, right? So observability then all of a sudden becomes very interesting because you already you are not only looking at uh, everything deep down from the uh, OS to the container uh, layer all the way up to the application layer, and then being able to analyze correlation across these mm -hmm. different types of data in uh, what we term as observability uh, becomes super interesting. So that said, uh, there is just a lot that is um, you know, happening in, in the observability stack that is being used in open source. And uh, one of the areas that uh, would be, uh, I'd like to kind of go through is uh, you know, what we are doing in AWS native solutions um, and then also going into uh, open source solutions, right? So Amon, can we get to the next slide? Uh, I think uh, there is, yeah, cool. So um, uh, again, just wanted to call, uh, you know, the distinction between uh, what has been natively built um, in AW to monitor and observe uh, AWS services uh, over time has been uh, the CloudWatch stack, as you are familiar with, with the CloudWatch service and the agent being available to look at logs and metrics uh, to be able to monitor, observe, and analyze uh, through container insights, through Lambda insights, co contributor insights into service lens to visualize and, and hence that stack, and then you have AWS X-Ray, which looks at traces and can analyze trace data and be able to, then that is also observable. Now enter you know, the, a, a, a new set of open source solutions that are pervasive today uh, and are being used a lot by um, not only in the Kubernetes space, but also by users uh, who are deep using uh, Kubernetes-based uh, solutions as well as other container solutions. And you have the uh, open telemetry uh, being served as a fundamental layer in providing that um, baseline AWS distro 
uh, for open telemetry that we will be talking about, which is a downstream distribution of the open telemetry project. Uh, and then you have uh, tools like Prometheus, frameworks like Prometheus, um, is the, which are uh, analyzing the data that is being provided uh, from uh, different sources through open telemetry being then visualized by Grafana. And so you can see there's an there's a lot of interoperability across each of these layers. And at the same time, uh, also a new generation of open source stacks that are uh, coming into place and have been used very pervasively um, by users and customers across the board. So how do you decide? So I love this slide, by the way, because you know that, that native monitoring uh, column a lot of people are probably very familiar with that and they get it. They understand CloudWatch logs, CloudWatch metrics, all that gets enabled when I use the CloudWatch agent. And then, you know, people that might be uh, coming to us from an open source uh, perspective instead, they're starting to use EKS because they want uh, an open source experience container orchestrator. Uh, they might be familiar with uh, Elasticsearch, Prometheus, like you point out, Jaeger. I need to feel like I plug plug Jaeger because I'm wearing cool. Jaeger hoodie today. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that all gets enabled by this distro for open telemetry. So, um, you know, I'm used to, I hear the word distro and I think Ubuntu, Fedora, uh, RHEL. Uh, so I'm, I'm not used to thinking in terms of, a distro not meaning an operating system, but what what's a distro in this in this case? So I mean, uh, again, Rent, you bring up a very good point because for those of us who have been involved in open source and open source, you know, back from our Linux days, as well as uh, we continue to uh, build out distros further, distributions are basically downstream packages and bundles of uh, you know, a collective set of um, different kinds of components could be, you know, in, in this specific case, this is an observability distribution. And what that means is there are specific components that uh, are exporters, you know, collectors, agents, SDKs, APIs that are packaged together uh, with uh, endpoints that are easy to access, whether that is from AWS uh, services or others, uh, where you can actually out of the box as a customer or user be able to pick that up and just use it, uh, download the distribution, and you have every uh, you know component that you need in a distribution. And that's very pervasive in the uh, you know Linux and the OS world, as you as you said. But it is also very pervasive to use uh, distributions uh, in the context of uh, stacks that are, say, a search stack um, or a observability stack or a, mm, a application stack, you know, which is serving a specific purpose. Got it. Um, all right. So. There is one, sorry, there is one thing I just wanted to note before we move on, um, because Brent mentioned, you know, EKS and Kubernetes and so on. And, and, and it's true, right? Like if you, would, you know, use Kubernetes, you very likely also use Prometheus. Um, but ADOT, the AWS distro for open telemetry, just to be clear, is not Kubernetes or EKS That's specific, correct. right? It's like for any kind of containers, for any kind of EC2, Lambda, what have you, as long as you can uh, deploy uh, or, or use instrument, we, we get to that in a moment. Um, in in your environment, you can you can benefit from that, right? Yeah, so it's yeah. not confined or or only limited uh, use in. Yes, context. absolutely. In fact, um, AWS Distro for Open Telemetry, uh, which is again you know a production ready AWS supported distribution, but a downstream distribution of the Open Telemetry project where are all the components, all the software that we're building is all upstream in the open telemetry project itself. All the code resides there. All the code is merged and reviewed through a standard open source uh, project workflow. And it's really exciting to see this because we are contributing upstream first 
And then the distribution value comes in from providing support, from being able to have a performant, well-tested, secure bundle that is available to all users to be able to use and with an open source Apache to license. Right. And, so, oh, um, I just, I just wanted to add. So, you know, if I'm an ECS user and I, I'm, you know, I, I love using all the, the features of, of AWS. I like the native features. However, I feel like this enables me now to, if there is an open source tracing tool I want to use, it makes my, my experience a lot easier to integrate with that open, like Jaeger, for example, yes. whereas prior to this being released, that was something I had to kind of figure out right. and sidecar. And there's another aspect that I hear very often when talking with customers um, in, in cases where, and believe it or not, it's still the case that people have workloads on premises and you move from on premises to the cloud. You have with uh, open telemetry based solution, you have a very, very smooth migration story, right? You can use that on premises in whatever setup and then yep. move that to AWS and you, you know, there is literally no, virtually nothing you, you need to change, right? And this is yes. really, really a big... And, and that's the great value that a distribution like the uh, ADOT distribution, as we call it uh, uh, every, in an abbreviation, is is all about. You can you can use ECS, uh, you know, EC2, uh, if you are having an, an, or an, even an on-prem internal uh, setup, uh, as well as be able to use EKS, uh, Fargate, and support and even Lambda as, as uh, we're rolling out, uh, it out. So again, interoperability across platforms becomes even more pervasive across container platforms uh, as we have distributions that, that uh, you know, address these uh, areas. Nice, so you mentioned a demo. Oh yeah, yeah. let's. Uh, <laughs> we love demos. So, <laughs> so yes, exactly, and and we're excited about the demo here today. What we're going to be uh, uh, again focusing in on is metrics uh, primarily, and wanted to show a walk you through a really cool sample app which we have, uh, but you can actually have this code available. It is uh, available in one of our workshops. Uh, and what we are going to do is specifically uh, take an example of a Prometheus-based pipeline, which is interoperable with the OTLP uh, protocol that uh, Open Telemetry uses. And uh, the Prometheus receiver, the processors, and the exporter are part of the Open Telemetry collector that is available in the AWS uh, distribution for open telemetry. And uh, we will walk through this uh, whole process of scraping metrics, of being able to discover different service endpoints, uh, being able to gather those metrics, process them, and then be able to export it through a remote write exporter, uh, which pushes metrics to a, any kind of an endpoint. And this specific case will be uh, taking the example of a Cortex endpoint, which is a Prometheus remote write endpoint. Um, and then we will actually, if we have an um, you know, on-prem setup of Grafana, which we will be using to visualize these metrics. Because as you, as you know, Grafana is also very pervasive in the Prometheus world and, and used as a visualizer for many types of metrics and data. It's um, super popular, yeah. and 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 then and, and it's very popular and it's open source. So, with that said, uh, again, we'll uh, dive into you know this workflow, and please feel free to ask questions. So, over to you, Aman. Yep, I'll take over from here and do the demo. So, um, in order to really look at each individual component um, and analyze what part to play in the pipeline, we're going to be doing just a local setup for now, running it on my local machine and we'll, we'll see what um we'll see just how all of these different components interact together so firstly you know what i want to set up is as alalita mentioned cortex cortex is um it, it's used to store prometheus metrics and you know it provides a lot of great functionality you know it's highly scalable uh highly available uh and it works really well for really large uh, prometheus solutions you know your application will be creating Prometheus metrics, but ultimately you're going to need some place to store them where 
you can then you know query them from Grafana in order to visualize them. We think Cortex does this very well, so that's what we're going to be using. So first thing we can do uh, right now, you can have pretty much just uh, an empty repo here. We can clone the Cortex project. And I'm just going to build Cortex locally. And I'm going to set it up to uh, just store metrics locally, like probably what is the most simple Cortex setup that, that we could use in this case. Just once this cloning is done, I can just uh, run a command to build Cortex. Um, the, the files that we need for configuration are already set up there. And we don't need to dive too much into the details there. Once, that's, once that is um, set up, we can just run it. Yep, there we go. So just go into Cortex and we can build it. While this is building, there's a question that came in. Uh, how will AWS Distro link with App Mesh or with any service mesh? Actually, uh, for that, uh, right now, the functionality is not uh, added to the distribution yet because we, um, you know, again, do a thorough round of security testing as well as other types of performance and uh, integration testing. So there are different uh, components lined up in the pipeline. But if you do, uh, if you are interested in looking at uh, service mesh uh, usage, I would say look at Open Telemetry uh, on GitHub and take a look at the components that are available upstream on the project. Um, and, and again, keep a lookout for what we continue to add in upcoming releases uh, in, the, so in the next quarter. Awesome. With my, with my SMI head on, SMI um, uh, maintainer head on, I'll share this one here. We we recently had a, in the SMI, which is the, the service mesh interface, another CNCF project, um, had a meeting around metrics. And we really want to make sure that we align there um, and actually working together yes. uh, with Oto. There, so. that's a that's a good point uh, michael you bring up because it's, it's, it's still early days right it's yeah. still early days it's just from the from the cncf project perspective there is um you know mutual understanding and, and inside it's there's nothing yet that we can say we have delivered but uh, we're working on it right it's definitely something we yep. we are uh, aware from both sides, I believe. And, and, and as, as many of you know, open telemetry is a relatively you know new project and it has really, really gained enormous popularity in the last year uh, and has picked up steam where literally every uh, company working in the, an organization working in the observability space are collaborating together, which is monumental as an achievement. Uh, and and um, uh, it, uh, as you know, it has its origins from uh, the open tracing and the open census projects that were merged to create the open telemetry project in 2019. Uh, but uh, again, it's early days, as Michael said, you know, there is a lot of integration uh, discussions that are happening uh, to continuously integrate and improve the interoperability of these components with each other. Yeah, uh, and we can carry on with the demo now. Cortex is running. You can see over here uh, it's running on localhost port 9009. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest UI, but that's not the point of it. We're using Cortex as our backend, so uh, we can proceed with just how we want to actually utilize Cortex. Um, the next step now, which Alita had originally mentioned, is uh, the ADOC collector. And the collector is going to be our agent for actually transferring metrics from our sample app, uh, from, from our sample app into Cortex. So the sample app that we're actually going to be using today is this over here. We've got ourselves a little pet shop. Uh, this, you know, this mimics some type of setup that a customer would have set up. They would have their application. It can, it can be whatever, um, whatever the customer has set up. Uh, the key thing that we need to take away from this part is the application needs to be instrumented by the Prometheus client. And what that means is that the Prometheus client will be outputting metrics at the metrics endpoint. So over here, if we go to, if we append slash metrics to the end of this. You can see here, this is a series of Prometheus exposition format metrics that um, is generated by this application. And this gives us a lot of insight into what is going on in the application. This is exactly how customers would have their own, their own application set up uh, instrumented by Prometheus. So what we really want to do here is take these metrics and move them into Cortex. 
Uh, what do we need to do that? We need the ADOC collector, which is going to be uh, the middleman agent that actually does that. So exactly what it's going to do is it's going to scrape the metrics from this using the Prometheus receiver. Um, in our specific pipeline, you know, there's you have the option of using processors in a collector in order to optionally apply transformations. Uh, we don't quite need to do that in our case, though, so we're not going to be doing that. Um, the last stage we have within it is an exporter, uh, which in our case, the AWS Prometheus Remote Write exporter. And this is going to be actually outputting them to Cortex. So, so, so there's a, a collector that's going to reach out and grab, basically scrape these metrics from, yeah. from yep. this page. Then we could process some of those if we needed to, uh, transforming some of the data, maybe changing the units or something like that. Yep. And then there is an exporter that goes and writes it into Cortex. Yep. Did exactly. I have that right? Yep, yep. absolutely. Exactly. Through the and, exporter, which, which we will also be talking yep. about. And yeah. the collector that we're using is uh, the AWS OTOC collector. And this is here. This is open source. Everybody can go view it. Everybody can uh, see the source code for it on GitHub for free. Um, this is what we're going to be using. I had just cloned it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run an instance of this collector. And I'll show you the configuration file for it first, actually. So the configuration is going to look like this. And over here, um, you can you can see, you can make the connection with what I just said about how we're going to use it. You know, we've got, we start off with the receiver. we got the Prometheus mm -hmm. receiver here. Now, the configuration within here, an important thing to know is that this configuration, albeit that this is a very simple one we're showing for the demo, this is identical to configurations that customers would have set up if they're using a regular Prometheus server. Uh, we're actually, within the collector, we use the Prometheus source code over here uh, in order to implement the configuration of the receiver. And, you know, customers who are using a regular Prometheus setup, if we want them to switch over to here, they would have spent a lot of time already on their own configurations. You know, there's a lot of um, metric relabeling configurations, uh, the scrape configurations. A lot of these take a lot of time. And um, most of the configurations that you'll see for Prometheus receiver will be very, very long. So in order to convince customers to switch over, you know, it's important for us to maintain parity and have our configurations as close to the customer's current configurations as possible. And you know, I, I could see it as reason enough for customers to not want to switch if these configurations did not match up as Prometheus. That's how big of a deal we consider that to be. Um, so that was definitely something uh -huh. very important we wanted to keep in. And you can see this is a very simple configuration. What this says is every 15 seconds, uh, we're going to have a scrape. It's arbitrarily called Pet Shop App. And this is the exact uh, host name that the Pet Shop App is at right here. Um, Prometheus knows by the Simon, Simon, can I, can I yep. quickly stop Go you ahead. here? Just a, a moment to maybe expand a little bit on the remote write and you know push versus pull, et cetera. So yep. people might not be that familiar or don't have the full background there. Yeah, yeah for that, sure. That's a good point. And, and, and uh, again, uh, let's make sure that um, uh, you know, we, we clearly uh, call out what a pull exporter means versus what a push uh, exporter does. And, and in this specific case, the Prometheus Remote Write Exporter is a push-based exporter, which means that it is pushing metrics data to the endpoint, to the Cortex endpoint in this case. Uh, usually, uh, the default behavior of a Prometheus uh, server, again, and a Prometheus setup is that it pulls and pulls metrics from an, a, an exporter. So uh, in, in a default uh, use case, you will always have a default setup. You will always have a Prometheus uh, server going and pulling metrics and pulling for metrics every time you know, in a preset interval, just as the scrape interval here. Uh, but it's a pull mechanism. In this specific case, what is very unique and very interesting is that you have uh, the ability any customer has the ability to be able to push metrics to the endpoint that they want to, right? And, and what that does is provides customer control uh, rather than a external pull mechanism, which is not usually you know, accepted in most secure setups. Um, and, and this really makes it uh, super compelling for any uh, user, any customer to be able to take and push metrics to where they need to. And in this case, specifically, we are talking at the Prometheus, talking about the Prometheus um, server. 
Yep, uh, and Cortex is designed exactly that. To, uh, it uses a Prometheus push gateway endpoint, uh, and it provides that to a customer so that customers can simply take that endpoint and put it into their remote write configurations. And as we can see in the exporter stage, that's exactly what we do. Uh, the Prometheus remote write exporter here is, it's a lot simpler than the receiver because all we need to do is specify the endpoint. As I showed you guys before, localhost 9009 is in fact uh, the Cortex instance. And using PromQL's uh, API, we just specify the push gateway endpoint, which uh, Cortex tells us is this. And with this, uh, the collector can receive metrics from a Prometheus endpoint, and it can export metrics to Cortex. And then this final stage here is just actually putting together the pipeline, you know, letting the collector know that, hey, we're receiving from Prometheus and we're exporting using the AWS Prometheus remote, right? So that's the configuration. Now, all we need to do is we need to build the collector, the Configuration exists there in config.yaml. We can go into the collector and just run a command to build that and specify the configuration to be what I had just shown you there. So config is config.yaml. Another thing that we're going to need to set up as well while that is running is Grafana, because you know once our metrics are in Cortex. How do we actually know that they made it to Cortex? Um, we don't really have any sort of UI. We need Grafana to be able to query metrics from Cortex uh, and then allow us to actually see them through data visualization. So Grafana. And this might be a good chance to go ahead and start the build or whatever, and then let me know when I have a question ready. <laughs> yeah. Grafana luckily is actually very simple to set up. We actually just have to run a Docker container uh, I don't know why these stars get copied into here, but remove this. And there we go. Grafana is up. Awesome. Uh, so there was a question earlier from Texan Raj. Uh, can Cortex work with CloudWatch Container Insights? And I wanted to kind of toss that out. Maybe you could sort of re remunge uh, that question just a little bit and talk about how uh, how is Cortex positioned uh, next to or with or against uh, CloudWatch Container Insights? Um, so Cortex is a similar or a parallel endpoint as you would have uh, the AWS, uh, the CloudWatch uh, service and Container Insights specifically. Now, uh, if they were an exporter that uh, imported in Prometheus uh, metrics that could be actually uh, pulled into Container Insights, but um, Cortex is probably not the right analogy. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, I think it, it can be a bit confusing uh, because in in open source land, in what you see in CNCF, um, and, and both Cortex and Tanus are in the meantime, you know, incubated projects. Yes. Um, or in the process there, um, we we recently did the the due diligence preparation, the SIG observability to to get these projects uh, further in their graduation process, and and you know where maybe in our case what what we looked early on with the managed AWS native and and open source based um, in, in open source based uh, setups, you might deal with smaller components that have a, a more finer grained or, or, or tighter scoped um, task, like, you know, Prometheus actually doesn't do an awful lot, right? It's like, if you want to uh, keep your, your metrics around forever, you need some long-term storage solutions such as Cortex or Tanos that, that does that for you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you know, Prometheus would just fill the disk where it's, where it's at and, and that's, that's essentially it. Um, or, or alerting, right? It's outsourced to the alert manager, et cetera, et cetera. So you have like many, many small components that um, at the end of the day, when, you know, on the one hand, that's great. On the other hand, if you look, for example, at, at you know what we see here now, Grafana and, and Prometheus working together, um, where on the other hand, with, with CloudWatch and, and, and X-Ray, you have a, a bit more like an end-to-end an, an, an -end integrated uh, experience there right where where everything works essentially uh, out of the box and to me at least maybe i'm misinterpreting things there but and then a little keep me honest to me uh, a dot the aws distro for for open telemetry is kind of like the the glue the kind of like 
the thing that makes all of them, uh, from from your point of view, if, if you're a developer instrumenting your code, work more or less the same, right? Like you can then send signals, metrics, logs, traces to whatever uh, yes. endpoint, to whatever to whatever downstream to source. Totally, right? totally, Michael. I mean, that's a very good point. And interoperability is key here, right? So. Uh, one of the reasons why open telemetry has uh, really picked up steam is again the promise of having a common protocol which is the open telemetry protocol that is fully interoperable with uh, you know other protocols that um, are popular or commonly used like um, for example cloudwatch is working towards full interoperability with the uh, open telemetry protocol um, and uh, so is X-Ray. And, and again, in that world, um, uh, AWS Distro for Open Telemetry uh, br makes it seamless uh, to be able to interoperate and use, um, you know, CloudWatch uh, if you already have that instrumented, along with Open Telemetry, along with uh, any other Prometheus-based solutions. So I think the follow up, he's following up Texan Raj is and saying, you know, I think his goal is that he just doesn't want to have to maintain any long term storage with, you know, Cortex or with any, I'm guessing with any service. Uh, that's one of the things that CloudWatch can can sort of do for us. Um, is there is that I don't know. Is that something that uh, you know that's being thought about, or or have you yeah, heard that yeah. before? Uh, I, I think oh, uh, uh, just to respond to that, um, yes, uh, many users uh, have the same requirement, and and many customers have you know voiced a similar um, use case scenario that they would like to see, uh, because at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to uh, have local storage. Uh, necessarily for for large scale data right uh, and observability data so uh, yeah we are working uh, you know we are always listening to our customers and and um, keep a lookout uh, as we as we build more yep sounds good all right I'm on. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. No <laughs> right. worries, no worries. So back to it's our great to discuss this <laughs> yeah so at this stage, just to kind of reiterate where we're at, um, we've set up a Cortex backend, which is storing metrics. We've, we have a sample app uh, already running, which is producing metrics. And we've set up the A dot collector, which is transferring metrics from the sample app into Cortex. Uh, the last step is to now look into Cortex and see what the metrics are. So what we can do in Grafana is we can add a data source. We need to add a Prometheus one because we're doing Prometheus metrics. And the URL, um, we don't use local host here actually because Grafana is running from within a Docker container. But apart from that, everything else here you can see is the same as um, the Cortex endpoint, port 9009. And again, we're using uh, the PromQL API here. So that's all you got to do, save and test. We've got some confirmation that the data source is working. And now we should be able to see our metrics from here. And as you can see, let's look at the pet site ones here. Yep, we've got we got number of bunny searches, we got number of kitten searches, we got all sorts of metrics that were available from the metrics endpoint over here. Uh, these ones in particular. This is really and cool. Pets waiting and yeah, pets, and, pets are cool. Oh. Yeah. So you mentioned <laughs> yeah, way cooler than me. Uh, so you mentioned you you know that this application, this pet store application, is instrumented uh for this already but what what is that like is it is it you know including a library or is it that you have to you know wrap every uh write function you know with with code instrumentation how heavy um, is the instrumentation right. process uh, i think that's a great question uh brenton and, and i just wanted to call out uh, there are a couple of ways of doing this with uh, AWS dis Distro for um, Open Telemetry. And uh, the solution that we are demoing right now and walking through is an out of process implementation, which means that you can dynamically uh, use the collector, uh, which comes with the exporter and the scraper slash receiver to be able to just you know build, uh, deploy with your 
uh, sample with your application and be able to actually instrument a pipeline. The other choice uh, that um, users have is to be able to use an SDK uh, based solution where you are actually building um, in and specific language, uh, compiling and, and you know building an application with the SDK, Open Telemetry SDK, uh, and that also provides you an exporter, which is an in-process exporter, right? And and again, out of process versus in process have their uh, pros and cons. But uh, uh, the out of process collector based solution is very popular, uh, and that's what we are working through. So would I use out of process if I can't modify my code? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Yep. I think it's a it's a fair question, Brent. That you know we we said it initially. Like you you don't want to fly blind, uh, and and people would agree, and and obviously would also agree with can can we have that for free, right? Like I, I don't need to do anything. Like wh wh where are we there, right? Like I mean, maybe you can show us some source code or whatever. Um, like. How much is it? Is it like one line? Is it like every second line? Like how much effort do I as a developer have to put into, you know, to create all these wonderful metrics? Yeah, uh, I, I don't have the source code for this actual pet shop, but I do have a sample app that I made which yeah, actually uses the example, Prometheus yeah. client. So I can Yeah, and, and that's actually available uh, on our open source repos and AWS observability. So we can share the link for that too. And yeah, um, this, uh, we use the Prometheus client uh, to, do some instrumentation, except while well, the metrics that we're doing with are kind of just dummy metrics and we're generating random values. But you can see that the code here is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of um, importing the Prometheus Golang client because this is written in Golang. Um, and this isn't the actual file with the metrics. And over here, uh, you can see this is just us updating the metrics. We do a little, little zoom action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying to, a... trying to swipe in. Is that better? It's a fun type. Yeah, so yeah. again, um, we just, uh, we get the Golang client. Uh, this update metrics is kind of a dummy function for the purpose of the sample app. In reality, the metrics uh, would be updated somewhere within your actual code. So whatever the individual metrics are, you know, we can, we just did an add here. There's a couple operations you can do to modify the metrics. And uh, you also just have to register individual metrics. So uh, whatever metrics you want, I've just made a new counter. Um, you have to go and register it to the Prometheus registry. And uh, this is just a way that we use to store metrics. But in terms yeah. of what you really need in order to create a metric, you can see this whole thing is only 90 lines of code. Um, it's not a lot to do. You know, Prometheus provides a lot of great functions that do a lot of things and takes a lot of the worry out. Um, so instrumenting metrics right. is very straightforward. And and I think that that also shows the beauty of uh, having a standard and open open uh, source and, and 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 open standard uh, setup with with open telemetry because if you start today like if you bet on open telemetry and start instrumenting your code and you know use provider X I'm not going to name any names and and then today you know you say you, you find some new uh, you know open telemetry enabled environment uh, for analytics or whatever, and you move to another provider, you essentially just need to change one line, theoretically at least, <laughs> as I understand, and uh, you're, you're good to go, right? You don't need to to change a lot in, in your, your code to yep. uh, you know consume the, the signals with another. Yeah. That's nice. It's way nicer than it used to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Definitely. The <laughs> it's the power sure. of open source. <laughs> yeah. And open standards. Um, and that's, open that's standards, kind of yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's one of the key areas, again, you know, where there is a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, you know, collaboration towards using an W3C tracing standard spec as well as the uh, open telemetry protocol, which are standards, you know, that are being uh, used by the rest of the, uh, by all the industry, including us. Since we are at that topic, um, and uh, uh, just checking, I mean, how, how many minutes do you need for for wrapping up that that demo? Just to... uh, this is demo one complete. The second demo is uh, it's not very long at all. So okay, then maybe let's first do this the second demo and and then yeah, that, I think that would be great because I think it would be exciting yeah. for uh, yeah. you know our audience to be able to actually see an EKS setup. Uh, and yeah. uh, being able right. to even use sure. this uh, yeah. out of the box. Yeah, so uh, 
here's a little diagram representing scenario number two. Uh, all, all of the Kubernetes stuff I've actually already got deployed, so that'll make this demo a lot shorter. Uh, so pretty much what we're going to show off here is using uh, Prometheus service discovery within um, uh, with this pipeline. Uh, you, you may remember, you know, from our first configuration, what we had was we had specifically told the Prometheus receiver, hey, this specific patch up endpoint, I want you to scrape this. Uh, and then obviously it did that. But with service discovery, the idea is, you know, we want to automatically be able to discover all endpoints that are available uh, within, you know, an EKS cluster or within a node, uh, however you want. You can define your configurations to be either. Um, and I just want to, we can demo uh, that right now because yeah. I have that running in in EKS. So, you know, most of the setup is the same. The only difference is all this stuff is individually deployed in Kubernetes instead of on my local machine. Uh, and everything else is pretty much the same. So what I can show you guys here, it's kubectl get all within the namespace a dot call. Yep. So we have resize the, the um, terminal a little bit. Yep. Perfect. Thank yep. you. That should be better. Um, yeah, cool. That's, so within this namespace, okay. we've got um, we've got our a dot collector deployment, which is uh, the exact same thing that I had running uh, in this tab over here, except it's containerized and within a pod. We've got a sample app called RPC app, which is just producing some dummy metrics, uh, and we got you know just other standard Kubernetes stuff. We got services for them, and we got the replica sets. Uh, and then there's also yeah another sample app that there is deployed. So if I do a get all within the namespace AOC Prometheus pipeline demo. So we've got uh, another Prometheus sample app here. And this is actually the sample app, uh, the exact same one that I had showed you guys before over here. Um, so we've got two sample apps. We've got array.collector. We've also got uh, Cortex deployed. And uh, we also have Grafana deployed within a separate namespace. So that's in kubectl. Yeah, and that's the beauty of kubectl. Yep, I've got <laughs> One Grafana command does it all. Right here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, this Grafana instance is this one right here. So I've got this configured already. The data source is already hooked up to communicate with Cortex. And uh, what I want to show you guys is the configuration files that I had set up here. So I can make this a bit bigger. The key difference here is within really the Prometheus receivers configuration. You can see from this configuration, uh, we're still doing the pulling, obviously. Uh, the scrape interval is still 15 seconds, but we didn't explicitly refer to um, any specific endpoints here. We're using the Kubernetes service discovery configs. And what we're telling Prometheus is, hey, I don't want to have to manually input these endpoints. You can just find them for me. Uh, an important thing here is that we need to we need to give the right permissions to the Prometheus receiver. So there's quite a few uh, there's quite a few technical details involved there. Uh, and this involves you know having some of the TLS configurations, having a service account. Um, and we can see more of the details later. The Prometheus remote write is pretty much the same. The only difference is that um, we're actually deploying to our Cortex endpoint, which is in Kubernetes this time. And I added a namespace here just for us to visualize that metrics in Grafana will be prefixed by this, uh, anything that's processed by this pipeline. Another key thing to notice here is uh, this relabel config. What this does is you can see it looks within the Kubernetes metadata. If you look at our sample app RPC deployment, this one does not have this annotation set. I have it commented out. Uh, and again, this app sample app deployment just show you it's just a deployment referring to a container uh, with an exposing service. Same thing uh, with this sample app, deployment with a service. This sample app, the RPC one, does not have the annotations. And this sample app does have the annotations uh, right here, the annotation of scrape to true. And you know what this will do, although both get discovered, uh, the RPC sample app will actually get filtered out. And I will show you guys that in Grafana in a second. But apart from that, like I had explained before, you know, you need to set up the right permissions. You've got to set up a service account, a cluster role, a cluster role binding. And then the rest is pretty standard. We got a service for our collector and the actual deployment uh, for our A dot collector. And is this example code available somewhere on GitHub? This example code will be made available. We we are working on a getting started guide for uh, an EKS setup of the ADOT collector when it's officially okay. released. Um, on that website that was actually mentioned before, the awsotel.github.io, uh, the getting started guide will be there and uh, customers yeah. will be able yeah. to use that. And we actually have like a setup with um, using a demo with this exact sample app as well. 
So customers will be able to set that up and do pretty much exactly uh, what I'm showing here. Yeah, yeah, and then we will be uh, we're just in the process of documenting uh, and writing it out clearly. Yep. So, but we will be posting it. It should be available uh, shortly. Cool. In the next yep. few days. And uh, all there really is to show here, Grafana is already set up. So you can see these metrics are all prefixed by ADOT, like I had said. And the ones that come from the sample app, not the RPC one, are these ones here that are a dot test uh, followed by the metric type. Uh, another thing to note here is that you know all the metric types from Prometheus are supported. There is a counter. I don't know if you guys can read that actually, but yeah, there's a counter, there's gauge, there's histograms, and there's summaries. Uh, four types of metrics in Prometheus, and all of them are supported. So we can see the counter. The values are showing up here. I set this up this morning, so it's been running for a while, and they're all here. The gauges here, we've got histogram buckets. Uh, we've got our summary quantiles and uh, the counts and sums for the histograms and the summaries. And yeah, that shows, um, that's that for the sample app. In terms of the RPC app, these metrics do not exist right now exactly because of what I showed with the annotations. And I can actually, if we wanna see them, uncomment this out and then I can do a kubectl apply and then we should be able to actually see those. So. in my config files directory. I can do kubectl apply of, and this file is called sampleapprpc.yaml. Okay, and uh, it may take may take a bit for it to propagate, but these metrics now should all show up over here as well eventually because our collector will, it's constantly been running uh, now that this annotation has been updated, it'll recognize, hey, um, we need to collect, we need to collect the RPC apps metrics as well. And it'll take a bit of time to propagate, but they will eventually show up here. Very yes, cool. yeah, it's it's yeah. pretty live, live and real time. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that, that that goes to show uh, the Prometheus service discovery capability. You know, since the Prometheus receiver uses a lot of uh, pr the Prometheus uh, core Prometheus's code. All of the service discovery options that are available uh, by Prometheus are also usable in the Prometheus receiver. So yep. all that functionality really... is there and it's there for our customers to use. Yeah, and, and this all comes you know, from open telemetry uh, and, and these components are all part of core parts of open telemetry. There we go, metrics are here. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think we slowly but surely need to wrap up. Um, Alan, thank you so much for your awesome demo. That was really impressive. And uh, I think clearly showed uh, the, the power of, of ADOT in, in, um, in action. Um, I think we, we already started having a few discussions around what is going on in, in W3C with the trace context and um, in, in CNCF. Um, so what's, what's your view or your your next steps here, Alalita, in terms of I, I, different... I, I think, you know, again, uh, we are very excited about um, and, and have been participating and, uh, you know, contributing deeply in the, not only in the observability projects, uh, very excited to be working with the, uh, not only the open telemetry project, but with the Prometheus project um, and, and the Grafana project and other related uh, projects like Cortex. Uh, and and um, again, as you mentioned, Michael, the uh, these are many many of these projects are part of the CNCF uh, landscape, where uh, there are a whole set of projects, the Jaeger, Zipkin, uh, and other projects which are also related, which are working on solving uh, you know an end-to-end -end open solution for uh, which is standards based. And this is also the same collaborators or many of the, you know, a set of the collaborators also work on the W3C spec uh, for distributed tracing, um, as well as the um, W3C uh, standard, uh, if you will. Uh, so uh, the future is bright. Uh, we are, you know, deeply involved and committed to working in the open source observability space. And at the same time, that brings great value to um, and uh, to to our customers. Uh, and interoperability there is key, as as we see a landscape of um, uh, interoperable 
um, solutions, SDKs, libraries, um, services available, uh, which can make the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, observability solution uh, seamless for the customer. Awesome. Are there any uh, reInvent talks, any, uh, num you know, uh, reInvent number, uh, what do you call them? Uh, session IDs that session you ID. want to make sure to point out? I, I talked about that. It was last Thursday, and I think it's a couple of, of times still. Okay. Uh, open source observability. Um, yes, and, and Michael actually has a very good talk. Uh, Michael, maybe you can share the session ID for the open source observability sessions. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, Brent, to your point, there are a larger set of um, uh, se sessions at reInvent happening this week as well as next. Um, I would actually uh, request you to go check out the AWS open source blog where there are the open source sessions that are uh, itemized uh, in the posts and uh, the observability sessions are part of that. Uh, we also have a management and governance track at reInvent where there are several open uh, observability sessions planned uh, all the way from CloudWatch to Prometheus to, um, again, also, you know, some of the work that we are doing with AWS Distro for open telemetry. Nice. Awesome. So uh, I think that's all the time that we have for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have Jesse Butler on, and he's going to walk us through um, EKS, the new EKS console, and, and all of the functionality that's been added there, and then uh, walk us through add-ons. And we're going to take our first look at, at EKS add-ons. So uh, I, th I think this has been great, and I can imagine... Awesome you know, like, for example, with add-ons. Maybe this is eventually going to work its way into a single button push, and all of a sudden you have uh, the open telemetry distribution deployed into your cluster. Uh, that would be really cool. That is super cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Things are just getting better and better and easier and easier every day. Indeed. So, all right. Uh, until tomorrow, thanks, everyone, for joining, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Travis.